understand. Speaking with new tongue. Obeying the new commandment. Looking like, behaving like a new love. Number one, a new creature. We're looking at Second Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5, and I'm reading from verse 17. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. This year, you'll be a new creature. I will be a new creature. And any time an idea comes to you to say what you used to say, say, no, I'm a new creature now. To think the way you used to think, you say, no, I'm a new creature now. And to look angry, like you used to look angry, furious and fierce. As you looked, you used to look furious and fierce. No, I cannot do that again. I am a new creature. Anytime there's a temptation or the trial or something pushing you to be aggressive and pounce of other people, trample on other people like an old, like an old lion, you say, no, I'm a new creature now. If anyone be in Christ, it's a new, new creature. Old things are passed away and then it says, and all things are what? All things have become new. Anytime that you are tempted to disrespect our coordinator, our group coordinator, anytime you are tempted to do like you did before, that you know some of those coordinators, they just leave you to yourself. A frame is by himself. Leave him alone. Ephraim has joined himself to idols. Leave him alone. And you know our coordinators, they are gentle people and they are nice people and they are great leaders. They don't want to fight with anybody. And once you become kind of fierce and furious, they say that's fire. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. But this year, he will not leave us alone. Because our attitude will change, we'll respect them, we'll love them, we'll obey them, and we're going to listen to them. And then the nature of the new creature, the attitude of the new creature is going to show through us in Jesus' name. And the same thing we're going to do to the pastor. You know, sometimes the pastor will say, well, how can you have a crowd like this and not have at least one backslider? You know, among the twelve, you have only one Judas Iscariot. And uh, you know, how can you have a crowd like this and not have one backslider? And so, when somebody there is doing something, the pastor will just say, Ephraim is joined himself to idols, let him alone. That's another Ephraim joined herself to idols, let Levi alone. And pastor, go your way and don't look at them. But this year, you will not do it like that. I will not leave you alone. There's a magnet between you and I connecting us together. And then I cannot look away from you now because now you become a new creature. New attitude. New gentleness. New behavior. A new response to the message. And this year we're going to see that newness in our lives in Jesus' name. Therefore, if any man, any woman, be Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. New creature, now new heart. New heart. I'm looking at Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel chapter 36. And what do you mean, verse 25 and verse 26? Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 25. Then when I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean. From all your fieldiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. And I will, in your heart also, will I give you. Praise the Lord. It's a gift. You are going to have that gift today. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you, and I will give you an heart of flesh. Let's look at Ezekiel chapter 11 verse 19. Ezekiel chapter 11 verse 19. Number one, a new creature. Number two, is a new heart. Number three, is a new spirit. Ezekiel chapter 11 verse, verse 19. And I will give them one heart and I will put a new spirit within you. And I will take the stony heart out of their flesh. I will give them, give them, give them what? A heart of flesh. I'll take the stony heart. I'll take the stubborn heart. I'll take the self-willed heart. I'll take the hardened heart. I'll take the incorrigible heart. I'll take the stiff neck out of them. And I'll give them a heart of 
flesh. And then the Lord will make a new covenant with us. And with that new covenant, there will be a new blessing in every life in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 8. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 8. A new covenant. A new covenant. Hebrews chapter 8. And we're looking at verse 8. For finding fault of them, he says, Behold, the day is come, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Verse 10. For this is the covenant, the new covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind. I will put my laws into their mind. The new man will not be lawless, but law abiding. Will not be lawless, but law abiding. You see, uh, when you are old, the old man, old creature, old behavior, old character, the old man is lawless. The old, the old character is lawless. The old creature is lawless. They behave as if there's no Bible, as if there's no principle, as if there is no law. Lawless. But it says, I'm going to have a new covenant with them. And when I make that new covenant with them, I'll put my laws into their minds and write them them in their hearts and I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people this year nobody will be lawless here the Lord will write his law in our hearts that is the new covenant he makes with us and we're very conscious of that every time we're carrying that in our hearts in our mind every time in our spirit in our soul every time and we're remembering that it's only the old creature that is lawless only the old creature that is lawless and if you are law abiding a real child of god a new creature with a new heart with a new spirit with a new covenant then you say i'm going to be law abiding can we say that together i will be law abiding Say that again. Say that once again. You'll be law abiding in Jesus' name. Number five, a new tongue. A new tongue. A new tongue. A new what? Tell me out loud. A new tongue. We're looking at Mark chapter Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 17. And this sign shall follow them that believe. Are the believers here today? Yes. I said, Are believers here today? Yes. This sign shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. Anywhere you go, before you open your mouth, devils will flee away. Yes. Do you remember that when the ark of the ark of the covenant was stolen by the Philistines? They put the ark of the covenant where in the shrine of they gone their idol. And there was no priest there. There was no Levite there. And there was no preacher there. And there was nobody there to command anything. But when they woke up in the morning, Dagon was falling just by the presence of that act. As you go around this year, even before you open your mouth, demons will flee away in Jesus' name. Demons will not get into you. Demon will, demons will get out of your environment. All around you like this, they say, He is coming, she is coming. Let us leave before He comes and before she comes. They will not have power over you in Jesus' name. Yeah. Hey, you notice this year now. Notice this year. Just mark it down. Mark it down. When you sit somewhere, the, spirit, the power of the Lord will be around you. Yeah. The Spirit of God will be around you. Yeah. And the fire of the Lord will be around you. Notice this, notice this, you are sitting down there already, or you are praying there already, and somebody comes to sit down there, and when he sits down there, and then you say, oh, how are you? Welcome. Are you coming to service for the first time? And then the fire is burning. If that person has evil spirit, or you are closing your eyes and praying, the, the person is gone. Yeah. You say, ah, where is uh, this person I spoke to just now? Don't worry, she is gone. Because your presence will drive evil spirits away. Yeah. Will drive all those evil powers away. Yeah. And I put that anointing upon you that time. Yeah. That nobody shall be able to hurt you in Jesus' name. Yeah. 
when the seat on the seat where you have sat before, as the seat where you sat, evil spirit will get out of them. And the sicknesses will get out of them in Jesus' name. This year is special. I said, this year is special. And this power that God has given, I've gone to, you know, many places, uh, you know, the past years, and, you know, we, we just mentioned the name of Jesus, and that happens, and that happens, and that happens, and now the power has been, you know, just at the pulpit here, but I'm transferring the power to the people. So that same authority, that same anointing that breaks the yoke, because revival is going to start in this church again. And you know, you are going back home in the bus, and somebody says, hey, I'm having pain. Just say, I'm here, I'm here. I'm a daughter of the pastor. I'm a son of the pastor. And lay hands on them right there. They will recover in Jesus' name. Because these signs shall follow them that believe this year. In my name, they shall cast out devils, and they shall do what? Tell me out loud. Speak with new tongues, new tongues, new tongues. Not the old, not old tongue. The old tongue that will slander people. You know, you know somebody is getting brother so and so. You hear the announcement, brother so and so. You get married to sister so and so. And then the old tongue comes on. Uh, I know. They were friends together in the primary school. Shut up. Don't say that again. That's the old tongue. But the new tongue. Praise the Lord. I knew that brother will discover the will of God. That's a new tongue. I said that's a new tongue. And then after the service, you go to that sister. Sister, beautiful. I knew, I knew God will reward you. Because I knew you'll be faithful to God. That brother is the, is the nicest brother I ever saw. God gave you that gift. Praise the Lord, you'll enjoy your marriage. That is the new tongue. You know, the people that think about new tongue, blah, 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 blah. They say that's new tongue. And then there's anger. There's slander. There's lying. That one is old tongue. That one is devilish tongue. I will not have devilish tongue. The new tongue that will love other people, encourage other people, speak sweetness to the lives of other people, make them happy and make them joyful. The way you talk, that's the new tongue. And this year, it will be new tongue in Jesus' name. When our coordinator finishes preaching, you know somebody at the back there will say, how did you say the message of the coordinator? And then the other fellow will say, me, is that preaching? I didn't like that bad tongue. Me, this year, I will not have bad tongue. But you say, praise the Lord, our coordinator looks new. A group of it looks new that the message everything just sank into me and today I will they continue to bless me. Who could you bless me? That's a new tongue. Everybody say new tongue. New tongue. The tongue of criticism, no more. Amen. Slandering people, no more. Amen. Cutting down people, no more. Amen. Disrespecting people, cursing people, abusing people, insulting people, mocking people. Old tongue, no more. Everybody say no more. no more. But the tongue that will encourage other people, the tongue that will lift up other people, the tongue that when somebody is sad and you talk to them, the new tongue that will make them cheer up, the tongue that will make a person wanting to commit suicide will say, I don't want to commit suicide again. If this person talk to me like that, there is hope for me. The tongue that will give hope to other people, that's the tongue we are going to have this year. New tongue everywhere in Jesus' name. And a new commandment, number six, a new commandment. We're looking at John chapter 13. John chapter 13. And I'm looking at it from verse 34. John chapter 13, verse 34. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one towards another it will happen it has started happening already there's a change in your life right now there's a change in your everything right now that when you go out there today everybody will say sister what happened to you you're you're so bright i see sunshine is upon your life already it is so i said it is so but look here now First Corinthians chapter 5, verses 7 and 8. A new law, a new law, a new law. It says, Put out therefore the old leaven, that she may be a new law, as ye are leaven. For even Christ have passed over 
a sacrifice for us. And then he says, therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, neither with the leaven of madness and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of what? Of what? Of sincerity and truth. You have it already. I said you have it already. You are a new creature. Say I'm a new creature. I've got a new heart. Say that I've got a new heart. Say there's a new spirit within me. Say I have a new covenant. And I'm going to speak with new tongue. Say that I'm going to speak with new tongue. The old tongue is cut off. My tongue is new. I will live by the new commandment. I will love everybody. I'm a new lamb. No hypocrisy. No hypocrisy. No insincerity. I'm going to live a new life. Point number three now. The new nation of the new man. The new nation of the new man. First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 9. First Peter chapter 2. Verse 9. But she a chosen generation. Amen. A royal priesthood, praise the Lord. And holy nation. And holy nation. A peculiar people. That ye shall show forth the praises of, of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Brothers and sisters, look up here. We well, thank God for what God is doing. And I praise the name of the Lord for you. Say praise God. Praise God. You know, we just finished our congress yesterday. And for the first time, we invited ministers and we invited bishops and not bishops from other churches. And for the first time, they saw us the way we really are. And then yesterday, when we finished the Congress, they were coming to see me, some in twos, in threes, in five, some as individuals. And I cannot forget what they told me. They said, you know what? This is a nation inside another nation. Praise the Lord. They said, the security people here, they've never seen security like this in any church before. They said, the ushers, they said, where did you train these people? They said, those ushers, they've never seen ushers in any church like in this place before. And then they said, somebody said, please, I need your permission. That will give me permission to get the notebook of the choir. That they want all those notes that the choir sang. That is like they've never had choir in their lives before. And he said, those women, respectful, honoring people, that uh -uh, that these are not this not Nigeria. A nation, in another nation. And somebody said, I went around. And then the people that were sitting outside, and they were, as we were preaching, they all kept quiet. Nobody, that they have been having conferences in other places. That they will not be able to get them together. That they will be here, here, and there. But that these people here, even those who didn't have, not have seats inside, they sit outside there, and they are writing notes and writing notes. Then they repeated again, they said, you know, this one is another nation. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And I'm saying, they have not seen something yet. They have not seen what? Anything. They have not seen anything yet. Because when they come next year, with this new life that has come, with this new nature that has come, with the beauty that I see on your faces now, if this beauty I see now will go until December, and go until next January, when they come, I don't know what they are going to say. Praise the Lord. The touch of the Lord will be upon your life. You make me feel happy. 
you know, as they came and they talk and they came and they talk, and some of them were apologizing to me. They said, We used to say this about deeper life, about deeper life. They know my preaching. It's not because of my preaching, it's what they saw in the life of our people. And I'm praying that the good thing you have done, God will reward you. Yeah. That this year, the happiness and the joy you have brought into my life and my, and my ministry, they send joy a hundredfold, the Lord will multiply to your life. A new nation, a new nation will be a new nation in Jesus' name. It says, let me read that thing again in First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. But she are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people that he should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous 